In this problem, we want to know how much money Oksana is going to have in four years. And she invests $2,000 today, and she's also going to invest $2,000 in three years, and we want to know how much she'll have in four years from today. She can earn 14.4% per year, however, it's compounded quarterly. Compounded And whenever you see a compounding frequency that's less than a year, some red flags should go off thinking, I need to be careful with my timeline. Or whenever you see a compounding period that's shorter in frequency, or more, more common in frequency, shorter in duration, shorter in length, than how often cash flows go. So again, if she's putting money in today, if she's putting money in three years, and she wants to know how much she'll have in four years, we can express zero, three, and four in terms of whole numbers of years. So a year step comes out of that uh, step of figuring out what each notch on the timeline should represent. 14.4%, the rate we're giving is an annual rate. A year pops out. However, compounded quarterly. A quarter. So of our three steps, we've got a year, a year, and a quarter. A quarter is the shortest. The notches on our timeline should represent a quarter. If they represent a quarter, then what is the appropriate rate for each quarter? Well, if it's 14.4% per year, and there's four quarters per year, then the quarterly rate is simply equal to the APR over the number of quarters in a year, which we're given the APR as that annual rate, 14.4%. Four quarters in a year, 3.6%. So again, she's not really going to be earning 14.4% over the whole year. She's going to be earning 3.6% in this quarter. And then in the second quarter, she'll be earning 3.6%. But it's not just on the initial 2,000, it's on the 2,000 plus the amount of interest that got earned over the first quarter. So we want to make sure our periods and our timeline represent a quarter, and therefore we can think of it as investing $2,000 at time zero, plus investing $2,000 at time 12, and we want to know how much money she'll have at time 16. So therefore the future value, how much she'll have, is the sum of the two future values. The initial $2,000, because remember the future value at time t is equal to cash flow invested at some point in time times 1 plus the qu quarterly return periodic, or periodic return t minus k. So if we want to know the value at some point in time, and we invest some money at a different point in time, it has t minus k is the number of periods it has a chance to grow for. So the, two th the initial $2,000 will grow by 3.6%. It gets, in it gets invested today, and we wonder how much it will be in four years. So that's 16 quarters plus The investment we're making in three years from today, from three years to four years, is from 12 quarters from now to 16. So it's 16 minus 12, which is equal to 4. So 2,000, and then we'll add those up. And that's how much we'll have, or Oksana will have, in four years. So 2,000 times 1.036 to the 16th is equal to 
$3,521.97. That's what that's equal to. The two, so the 2000 that grew for four years, grew for 16 quarters, into about 3500 The 2000 only had one year to grow, and it grew, or is expected to grow, $2,303.93. So when we add the two of these up, we get how much in total she'll have, and that's $5,825.90. $5,825.90.